My name is Matthew Solon. I'm an orthopaedic foot and ankle surgeon at Guildford. I'd like to talk about some problems when trying to deal with diabetic foot problems. And I'd like to acknowledge all the hard work of my surgical and medical colleagues in the Guildford and surrounding hospitals. Even in 2016, a lot of diabetic patients lose a leg through amputation because of the complications of ischemia or deep infection. As our population gets older and heavier, there's going to be even more of this about in the future. During orthopaedic training, we learn to deal with the problems of ulceration, deep infection and charcot. But when pus is involved, historically, we've always called for the general surgeons. In recent years, NICE have produced two reports on how best to manage diabetic foot problems. Modern emphasis is on a multidisciplinary team with many members. And the surgical expertise that's required may be orthopaedic or vascular. Our hospital no longer has vascular services. Like many places in the UK, vascular surgery now operates on a hub and spoke model with networks. This, unfortunately, means there's never a plumber when you need one. We recently had to investigate a serious untoward incident. The patient had a rather poor initial assessment, prompt treatment was not initiated, and ultimately this ended up in an above knee amputation. What we've learned is that it is essential to know exactly how your local vascular network functions. It is essential to be on good terms with the medical team, particularly those responsible for diabetic care. And perhaps most importantly of all, it's important that every single member of the surgical and orthopedic team understands how to manage a patient with an acute infected foot. NICE guidance has emphasized that every trust should have pathways. This is the pathway we use locally. It contains an awful lot of information, but the important bits pertaining to emergency care are highlighted in red. The medical team refer to a hot swollen foot as a foot attack. This requires urgent treatment. If the pus is not let out, the patient is likely to become septic and may not only lose their limb, but lose their life. There are many reasons that people find for delay. Waiting for an MRI scan, waiting till the end of the emergency list, waiting for a vascular opinion. None of these are good reasons to avoid urgent surgical treatment. It can be helpful to think of a hot diabetic foot in the same way that you think about a compartment syndrome. With a good pathway in place, the patient will benefit from shared care between the, between the medical team and the trauma and orthopaedic consultants. There'll be no delay for a scan and the incision and drainage undertaken promptly. We try and teach this to all new registrars on their induction day and after the emergency care is dealt with, the pathway allows for the definitive care to be undertaken by one of the orthopaedic foot and ankle specialists. It's essential that there's clarity over who owns the patient. On the day of admission, the admitting medical consultant and the on-call orthopaedic team share care. The orthopaedic team will refer the patient on to the foot and ankle specialists. 
in the same way the medical team can hand over to their diabetic specialist colleagues once the crisis is resolved. Not every acute problem can be dealt with by the orthopaedic team. A critically ischemic limb, for example, may require urgent transfer to the vascular hub. Everything is always easier with hindsight. But if we had had and used this pathway before, then our patient would have had a proper initial assessment, a prompt incision and drainage, and may not have lost their leg. The key messages here are that everybody on the on-call surgical team needs to be able to recognise the patient with a foot attack. If you have a robust pathway, then this will promote an urgent incision and drainage, and this needs to be done as an emergency. Thank you very much.